بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله in our series in fiqh صوم رمضان some of the fiqh some of the wisdom some of the benefits some of the blessings and rewards a fast in the holy month of Ramadan that we can look forward to we have to take time to contemplate a very important hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which gives us the manners that we should observe while fasting and what to look forward to and what to stay away from and some of the beauty and benefits in this life as well as the hereafter. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصيام فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به والصيام جنة وإذا كان يوم صوم أحدكم فلا يرفض ولا يصخب فإن صاب سابه أحد أو قاتله فليقول إني أمر صائم ولدي نفس محمد بيده لخروف فم الصائم أطيب عند الله من ريال نسك وللصيام فرحتان يفرحهما إذا أفطر فرح وإذا لقي ربه فرح بصومه رواه بخاري ومسلم من الحديث the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah said all the actions or deeds of the son of Adam are for him except fasting. For verily it is for me and I reward it and fasting is a shield. And if a person fasts, if one of you fasts, and he doesn't argue, and he doesn't make, <coughs> become noisy and uh, argumentative, if someone uh, curses him or fights him, then he should say, I am a fasting person. And by the one whose soul, by the one whose hand the soul of Muhammad is in, the smell of the fasting person's mouth is more beautiful to Allah than the smell of misk. And for the fasting person, is two types of happiness. Happiness when he breaks his fast and happiness when he meets his Lord from his fasting. Meaning the reward he gets from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his fasting in the dunya. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith I think is self-explanatory. But just to quickly bring about some of the quick benefits that we can obtain from here. It shows us that the greatness of fasting, that fasting is azim in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we have to have ikhlas lillah when we fast. Fast lillah. Make sure you fast lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make your intention purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we already mentioned before in one of our earlier sittings, that make that intention before fajr, for fasting the holy month of Ramadan, every day. And the reward is with Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Prophet Sallallahu was, or Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal said that fasting is a shield. How does fasting shield you? One of the ways fasting shields you, Ahabatifillah, is it helps shield you from the hellfire. It helps protect you from the hellfire. So gain the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Avoid looking at the haram. Do not eat. Do not drink. Do not... 
uh, speak haram, watch your tongue, watch your private parts. Don't commit uh, even what normally would be lawful sexual activity with your spouse. Do not do that during the month of Ramadan, during the days of Ramadan. But break your fast and then you can enjoy yourself as a husband and wife. Ahabati fillah and Debbie, be cautious. Because, and fasting is a shield. As we said, it shields you from the fire. And it helps to shield you even from those bad things and from things which are displeasing to Allah because it helps you to be away from those things. Normally, it's easy for you to look at the haram, to look at the opposite sex and be entertained by that and enjoy it. But during the holy month of Ramadan, if you're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to restrain that gaze. You're going, to do, you're going to remember your fasting and lower your gaze and say, Ya Allah, this is for you. I'm doing it for you because you know the reward is even more and the danger of breaking your fast is even greater because you're fasting and you don't want to lose those benefit and that reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the farhatan where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you will receive farha, farh, uh, happiness in this life wa farh in the hereafter and happiness in the next life. Another benefit of this hadith, ayya al habit fillah, is being aware, being aware and being aware of uh, speaking vain speech and from arguing with the people and from if you're being attacked, if you're being cursed, say to the person I'm fasting and try to get away from them to not break your fast. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us that the mouth, although we may detest a person who, keep your mouth clean. Use the miswak that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used the miswak. That's from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi said, Lola na shukka la ummati la martum bi sawaqi la kulli salat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If I wasn't afraid that my ummah would be find difficulty, then I would have ordered them to use the miswak with every salat, with every prayer. So showing us it's a strong sunnah, sunnah mu'akkidah. Because the Prophet used to do it. He used to love the miswak, even on his deathbed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as it came in a hadith uh, narrated in Bukhari and Muslim. That the Prophet والسلام, was on his deathbed. And, even, and he made uh, a motion to the son of Abi Bakr to give him his miswak that he, he was using it in his mouth himself and the Prophet ﷺ motioned with his eyes he was so sick Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was on his deathbed Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he motioned and then he gave him the miswak and the Prophet ﷺ used it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so it also shows us the importance of keeping our mouth clean but on top of that Ahabati Fillah that even the smell that we dislike, because no one likes bad breath. I know I personally cannot stand when a person has bad breath. This is just in general. That that was something that is a pet peeve. It was the way I was raised. We used to make fun of people. We were made fun of if we, this was a big aib in our culture. So for me, that's a big deal. But if your breath is because you have a dry mouth, because you're fasting, lillah, this is one of the most beloved smells to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He loves it more, it's more uh, 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 beautiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the smell of misk. And we love misk. I love misk myself. The Prophet ﷺ loved misk. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know it has a very, there's so many different kinds of misk or musk. So many different times, white musk and uh, various types of musk and ouds and things like this that are very nice but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the smell of the fasting person's breath is more beloved to him because they're doing it for his sake subhanahu and they're having the mashakka for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the difficulty for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that smell to Allah Azza wa Jal is more beloved and as we mentioned there's two happinesses that the Prophet that, that was mentioned in this hadith the, happy of, the happiness of breaking your fast because if you fasted, you, will, you know that happiness when you fast, especially a long day and you're ready. When you hear that adhan, 
that first date, if you eat dates, and one of my favorite foods to eat is dates and sambusa. And when I put those dates and sambusa, if I go to a masjid that has a big, that is one of the most, there is not a food on the earth that I think for me that is more beloved than when I'm fasting and I break my fast with dates and sambusa. I love it. And this is one of the, the happinesses, the, 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 the types of happiness that the person feels in this dunya. What about the akhirah? In the hereafter, وَإِذَا لَقِيَ رَبُّهُ فَرْحْ بِسَوْمِهِ That when he meets his Lord for the fasting that he did in the dunya, he will find happiness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a special door, and we'll talk about this in another hadith, door of rayan, for the sa'imin, for those people who fasted for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, and bless us with ilm nafir, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amilin mutaqabbilin. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم